Hello everyone, Jurassic Man here, and today we're going to be taking a look at a review of one of these two figures. Now, on my last trip to Walmart and Target, which was some time ago by the time this video is uploaded, I managed to find both these on the same week. The Dilophosaurus right here that I found in Target, and the Edmontosaurus I found here uh, at Walmart. Both of them were not far from each other as they were pretty close. However, I did get them in separate days because I did not find them on the same day together. So I had to find them differently on the same week. But yeah, as you can see here, these are new figures that have come out. People already established the Amontosaurus, but the Dilophosaurus is still somewhat new. So let's, um, uh, the, 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 the Dillo. Let's start the Dillo. Now the Dilophosaurus is part of the Savage Strike line, so it has an action feature, which is cool because I think it's the first very Dilophosaurus that has an action feature. So far, there are three current Dilophosauruses, with being the first one, the uh, basic figure, having the most ray paints, while the second one has two ray paints, but one unreleased. We'll get to that in a bit. But yeah, this is a Savage Strike Dilophosaurus from the new Primal Attack line. And because it's a Savage Strike, it has an action feature like this. I'll get to a minute why I don't like this sort of action feature in a bit. But yeah, the box is a very standard for the new Primal Attack line. And in the back of the box, you get a nice diorama picture of the Dilophosaurus with the tail action that lets you use the face or the frill. On the bottom corner, we have the, the Velociraptor, I'm pretty sure that's Charlie. We have a Stiggy Moloch and the Pachycephalosaurus. The Pachycephalosaurus is not new. I, I know, because I think I have that one. I still want that first one that came out in the first year. But yeah. I'm just going to throw it away and start the review right as it is. This review is going to be pretty short for it, so it's mostly going to do some comparison from the other ones to uh, lengthen it out. Not trying to get money out of it because I don't get money out of it. Uh, anyways, let's get right to it. So the paint job on this Dilophosaurus is pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, it has this nice green coloration. I'm pretty sure there's like army green color. Uh, it's not really a color that's really appreciated on anything else besides army stuff. So I don't know how appreciated this guy is to being this coloration of green. He also has nice orange coloration, a light orange too, along with a dark one. I think it's tange, tange I think is what it's called. And you look at the front, it shows the frills. Now the frills share the same color as that of the rest of the body. However, these frills are pretty cool looking if you think about it. And underneath the body, there's always the light, or in this case, a darker beige coloration. Uh, like always, and they, they never repaint these fully. But yeah, articulation on this guy is pretty limited. I mean, you can have him in different poses, but the way he's fixed pose, he kind of has no restriction. On the negative side, the arms can't really move that much, otherwise they'll hinder the action feature a lot. I don't know, it, it's kind of odd. The tail is a nice length, that's pretty good. It's not too short like the other ones. However, it is pretty noticeably short on this end where it cuts for the action feature. Uh, we'll get that to in a minute. But yeah, articulation on this guy is pretty good. He only has, let's see, two, two three, four, at least four to six points of articulation if you don't count uh, the fact that these guys have swivel arms that can move outwards and of course side to side. But articulation on this guy is pretty good. Paint is pretty good. Not the best, I gotta say. We had some other good ones in the past, but they were mainly just for the basic figures, which I really wish they kept that on those. But the art, the play feature on this guy is that you push the tail upwards and the frills spit out as such. Now, this action feature has a little bit of problem to it. Because even though I think it's pretty cool, it's the way you do it. Because I feel like pushing the tail down would be better instead of pushing the tail up. 
Because if you push the tail down, I think that's more better as a play feature wise. But you're pushing the tail up, so you gotta hold it in a slightly awkward way just to get it to go on one hand. On two hands, it's pretty fine. You just hold the tail down and you do this. But on doing that, you also tr a case of the uh, articulations on the legs to go down. And of course, they'll hold on your arm like that. It's a minor nitpick, but what I'm trying to say is I feel like the, the, the action feature should have been changed a little bit. Another thing that I do not like about this is that, like all the Dalafosaurus, they have these swollen necks to encompass the screws that go on the back. Why can't we just have a separate frill? Huh? Why, why, why can't we just have a separate frill? If Mattel was, if Kenner was able to do that, why can't Mattel do it? It's not that hard. All you gotta do is just put the frill on the bottom of the box, say that the frill is there and you can put it on and then it just squirts and bleh. But no, they always have to screw it on, which I think is just annoying. I, I don't know. I, I have a problem with these uh, source figures. I'm glad we're getting some. But really, the Kenner ones were really good. Even though there was only one or two Kenner ones, especially one with a frill that didn't really have an accurate cry, it was still far better than all the Dilophosaurus we're getting. Minus the Amor Collection one, because that one, that one is cool, but I haven't had it yet, or I can't find it. So, I'll have to wait for the review on that one. Here's a comparison shot of all the three current Dilophosaurus figures. Each one are slightly different by their play-wise and their pricing. Of course, they're pretty much all $10 at this point. When you're trying to get them now, they're going to be pretty expensive. So I have the original Fallen Kingdom one that came out uh, for the movies. That's based on the uh, that one thing. This was supposed to release around the same year, but it got delayed. And we never got that cool uh, original Jurassic Park coloration. Instead, we got this weird purple one. Which I don't mind, it's just weird. This one has a squirting action where you can fill it up with water and it will squirt. I'm not sure if I did a review on that. I'm pretty sure I did, but I probably never f uploaded it. But uh, that action feature was pretty cool. Of course, I don't like to do it now because, well, there's a risk of getting mold. And there's a new one right here that has the frill action. So one day we'll get a Dilophosaurus that will both have this and this. And a removable frill. I'm pretty sure we can't do that with a removable frill. But I just want one like this with a removable frill. So we don't have that gross tumor neck that they all have. Blech. And here we have a comparison of the Dilophosaurus with Alan Grant. And of course the Syats. The Syats is always going to be a figure I can review. Because this one has no shelf space. And it's just constantly just falling out of the space as I keep putting it. So I always have it on the side. But yeah, Syats will be here for us. He will be the unofficial mascot of this account for of 2020. But compared to each other, the Dilophosaurus is pretty good. It's the size of the juvenile ones. So yeah, those are canonically juveniles, but yeah. So what score would I give this figure? Well, it's personally not my newest favorite of this toy line. It is a good choice that they did. Of course, the action feature in the frill for the Dilophosaurus. But I feel like the Puzzle Sugis did a better jaw action of this year. So that gets better grades. This guy, mm, I don't know. I'm just not impressed with the Dilophosaurus figure. So I'll just be a 3 out of 5. Is it worth it? Kinda. You can get these guys in Target or Walmart or depending on where you find it. For at least $10. It should be around that range. I don't think it deserves to be a higher pricing because this figure is just not that very impressive and it's not very good. So if I were you, I would only get this if you're in a collector's deal or you want to get some kind of cheap toy to your to your kids, friends, or your kid, or your nephew, or whatever. Whoever likes it. So yeah, I hope you guys liked this review. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next one.